Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my presentation. My name is Takuma Kawai, working at Miraksha Edge Technology Corporation. Today, I'm going to talk about Linux kernel vulnerability. In the embedded Linux industry, the CP search method is widely used to develop software updates. CP search is a method to check software vulnerabilities using package name and version number. When we develop software updates, we first create a list of known security issues by CP search and then look for patches to fix these issues and apply patches to the platform. We typically search for patches by hand. So this is this table lists the number of CV IDs found by CP searches on a given system. Linux kernel 4.14.296 is the latest long-term support version released in October 2022, and the others are released in 2018. So even though it, it's the latest version, so many CV IDs are found. So however, because it's the latest version, most of them are false positives. I will explain how so, uh, why so many false positives are being reported. When, when we develop software updates, we search for CVEs by CP search, and then manually investigate our platform is affected by CVE or not. However, most of, of CVEs detected for the Linux kernel are false positives. In a typical situation, 50, 50 to 90% are false positives. There are two main reasons for false positives. The first reason is that uh, our kernel version is out of range of vulnerable, vulnerable version. The second reason is that the vulnerable code is not built with our configuration. So in this talk, I will show you how false positives are reported and how automate the determination of false positives. By automating the determination of false positives, we can reduce the manual investigation by 50 to 90% compared to the traditional method. I will explain the first problem. The first problem is that the version numbers registered in the NVD are too rough. For most CV, Linux CV records, only the major version that fixed, fixed the security issue is registered to the NVD. Uh, as an example, this figure illustrates a vulnerability history 5.17 in the above figure, the red line this the red line shows the range of vulnerable versions determined by the CP search two. In the lower figure, the red line is the actual version range contains the vulnerable code. In this example, the fix for the version 5.17, this one, is backported in version 5.15.7, this one. However, the CP search tool incorrectly reports version prior to 5.17 as vulnerable, including all versions of the stable branches. 
This is an example of CV record of Linux kernel. Version smaller than 5.18.4 are affected according to this CV record. The CV search tool looks at this record and determines that all major versions smaller than 5.18 and all versions of the stable branches are affected. This problem can be solved by using the Ubuntu CV tracker data. The Ubuntu CV tracker records the commit IDs that introduced and fixed, fixed the bugs for each CVE. I call these commits break commit and fix commit. The Ubuntu CV tracker records break fix commits on master branch. To find out the version range in a stable branch, we need the backported commit ID in the stable branch. I need this one, but Ubuntu CV tracker provides this one and this one. Almost all commits in stable branch are cherry picked from master branch. According to the stable kernel maintenance rules, the upstream commit ID should be included in the commit message. Like this, commit SHA1 upstream. Now, we know the fixed commit in the master branch Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Is this okay? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, uh, now we know the fixed commit in the master branch. We can search the stable branch with that commit ID to find the fixed commit in the stable branch. I will show an example procedure that you can actually perform in the data section. You can find a practical like expression in the CIP project repository that looks up cherry picked commit IDs. By using this, you can find the upstream commit for almost every commit in the stable branch. I will now discuss the second problem with CP search. The second problem is that the Linux kernel is too large. Most of the source code is not compiled in a build configuration optimized for a specific platform. On the other hand, CVEs are registered as a single product for the entire Linux kernel. I analyzed the Ubuntu CV tracker and categorized the Linux kernel vulnerabilities. Most CVs are related to architecture implementation and drivers. We optimize our build configuration for specific hardware, so we ignore most CVs as not built. I introduce a tool called coverage. Coverage starts with K, not C. Coverage is a part of, a, of the KMAX tool suite. With this tool, you supply a pair of file name and line number. You can check if this will compile or not. <coughs> Supplying kernel 3 and dot config file and patch file to the coverage command. You can check if the patch will compile or not. If the break commit doesn't build, we can check, we can determine that our platform is not affected by the CVE.
you, using the coverage command for this purpose requires a trick. Because the coverage command is based on line numbers, we need to fix the hank offset of the patch. This can be done by revert the patch twice, like this. I present an example CV triage flow. As an example, I will examine CV 2021-45480. First, we check the Ubuntu CV tracker for break fix commits. This is an example of Ubuntu CV information. Uh, um, <laughs> this is an example of Linux CV information in the Ubuntu CV tracker. <laughs> at, top, at, at the top is information imported from MVD. This area is from MVD and comments from the Ubuntu CV security team. This is the comments from Ubuntu security team. The break fix commits are, in this case, defined at line 33. The left commit ID is break commit and the right one is a fix commit. Both are on the master branch. Next, we identify the version range affected by the CVE. We can pass the break fix commits to the git tag contains command to find out the major version fix the CVE. In this example, the issue was introduced in 5.13 and fixed in 5.16. If, we are, if you are using 5.15 branch, you have to identify the version in the, in the branch that fixed the CVE. Because 5.15 is still maintained, CVE fix in the master branch are basically backported. So you can supply the fix commit to the git Log grep, grep command to identify the fix commit in the Linux 5.15.y branch, then do the same as previous. You can identify the version fix to the CVE in the stable branch. In this example, the CVE was fixed in 5.50.11. If your kernel version is affected by the CVE, you should check if the break commit is compiled. Firstly, you need to fix hank offset by reverting the break commit twice. Here. Then execute coverage command with dot, dot config file and patch file. This is an example report generated by coverage. For every modified line by the patch. It reports if the line is compiled or not. If all lines are file excluded or line excluded, file included, you can determine that your kernel is not affected by the CVE. Finally, I present some benchmarks. I took this benchmark a month ago I firstly generated a CV list 
using CV search and classified the CVEs. The total height from here to here is the number of CVEs detected by the CV search tool and green area from here to here they are false positives. This is the benchmark, benchmark results of the latest long-term support kernels. The green and light yellow area from here to here <coughs> are CVEs identified as, as false positives. And in all cases, more than 80%. This is all, and more than 80% were identified as false positives. It's not surprising that almost all are false positives. Because this is the latest version, all significant bugs are fixed. The older versions have more CVs reported because only major versions are recorded to the NVD. So the CP search tool reports almost identical CVEs for 4.14 and 4.14.296. The orange area, this area, are marked as positive. These were ignored in the stable branch. CVEs are ignored in case where they are incorrect or considered not serious. I did the same research with the latest version and older versions of the step 5.4 branch. I chose the version so that release dates are about a year apart. 5.4.221 5 October 2022 and 160 November 2021 and 80 November 2020. The dark green and light yellow area from here to here, they were identified as false positives by using the Ubuntu CB tracker data. The, the light yellow and light green area from here to here, they were determined not to be compiled. Light yellow area, this area, they were identified as false positives in both methods. I used the, the default configuration for ARM64. The CP search tool reports almost identical CP is for the same stable branch releases. This is because the most CVEs are only registered with major versions to the NVD. In this example, about 20% are detected as not compiled. This area and this and this are about 20%. In this approach, the number of CVEs de detected not to be compiled is depend on the break commit and dot config. So if the CV list is the same as the set, set of break commit is same, then number of false positives will be the same. For all versions of the 5.4 branch, the ARM64 default configuration will 
result in 20% false positives. Conclusion. For latest long-term support kernel, of course, all sh sh serious bugs are fixed, but the CP32 reports hundreds of false positives. This is caused by the low quality data from the NVD. Most CVEs can be determined as false positives by using the Ubuntu CV tracker data. For all the kernels, about 20% of CVEs can be determined as false positives considering .config file. That's all from me. Any questions? Okay. Uh, what, what, what does the color mean uh, in your graph? Yeah. Uh, I categorize the CV as three categories. One is uh, false positive determined by commit IDs, and second one is false positives determined by those config files and the others, and yellow area is determined by false positives by both methods. What, 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 what method? Uh, I firstly checked um, uh, <laughs> in, in this case, I suppose that we are using 5.15.10. So no. for example, I, I using 5.15.10. So firstly, uh, I have to determine the version range that is affected by the CVE in mainline. So in this case, in mainline, the bug, I, bug was introduced in 5.13 and fixed in 5.16. Yeah. These versions are mainline version. So now I'm using 5.15 branch, 5.15.10 for example, so, so, uh, <laughs> this is an example illustration. So, I'm using 5.15.10, maybe this one. So, mm -hmm. the fixed commit is backported in this one. So, if, you are, if I'm using this or this, we must fix CVE. But if you are using this one, you don't need to fix CVE. So yes. firstly, we have to check the, the actual version range affected by the CVE. Then, Once if you realize, realize that your kernel version is affected by the CVE, but it, your configuration could be not compiled the vulnerable code. So you check the break commit is compiled or not. So as third step, I check the break commit, this one, is compiled or not. So 
the commit graph represents that this area, light yellow and light green, represents that uh, false positives determined by the second step. Second uh -huh. step is this, this one. And the light yellow and light green area, this area represents that false positives determined by the third step, this one. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, okay, yay, thank you. Okay. Other question? No question? Okay, thank you for coming to my presentation.